In this segment, we will see how to train a recurrent neural network with an easy example. We will start by introducing our study case, which means the problem we will try to solve with a recurrent neural network training. Then we will review how to use Optim for training a neural network, and in this case, a recurrent neural network. Then we will run the code and see the output. We will try also to change some hyperparameters and see their corresponding results. Finally, we will delve deep into the code and we will see how everything works together. So let's introduce our learning problem. We are going to have a sequence to sequence case. So we are going to start from a sequence here, which is sent to the hidden layer. We are going to just use one hidden layer and then we expect to output a prediction based on the current input and from the previous input. So what is our task? So our X is going to be a sequence of characters. For example, A, B, A, B, B, A, A. And let's say we would like to be able to recognize the sequence of letters that make the word ABBA. like the famous music band. So more specifically, we would like that when we see this last character, the last A of the word ABBA, we would like our model to output a 2. Instead, for all the other cases, we just output a 1. So let's say this one is our sequence of label. If we get it right, like here I expect a 2 and I actually get my network predicts a 2, then I'm gonna highlight these four letters in one way. If instead I predict uh, the last one to be the correct sample, I will have to say that these letters here are a false positive. Instead, we can have that if I have to predict a number 2 here and I don't predict, so I predict a 1, I will highlight these four letters as a false negative. So in our visualization, we will have to take care of true positives, false positives, true negative, which are actually the only one that we won't be highlighting. And then we have false negatives. And we will see how we can do so in the Unix environment. So actually our X has to be one hot encoding. So this sequence that we have just written here on the left hand side. So let's write it here. It was A, B, A, B, B, A, A. We had to correspond to A, one, zero, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, for example, and so on. Our labels are going to be so for the first one we have 1, for the second one we have 1 third one is going to be 1, fourth one is going to be 1, fifth 1, then we have the sixth, we have a 2, and then again a 1, and so on. So our target labels are going to be 1 for all the uh, sequences that don't correspond to the ABBA sequence, and then it's going to be turning 2 when the sequence has been found. So we call it this find the ABBA sequence problem. So how do we plan to train such a system? We have seen for convolutional neural network that we can use very efficiently the Optim package. We will do here the same and therefore we will follow a very similar workflow. Let's summarize it just for convenience. So at the beginning, in the training part, we are going to have 
get data set this is a train then we are gonna craft our model our recurrent neural network together with its time replica we had to reset our state initial state because we start from a from a clean network so we haven't seen any sequence before then we should get the parameter in a vectorial form and not anymore as a object collection of objects and the gradient parameters so the partial derivative of the error with respect to the global vectorial parameter then we will define our function eval to which we send theta as argument and which returns error e and the partial derivative of the error with respect to the vectorial form of the parameters and finally we can run our optimizer for testing purposes we just need to get the data set in this case is the validation and then reset the state since the state would have been polluted by the training at this time of the code. We are gonna feed each example of X one at a time to the RNN and we don't need any more the time replica format. As we have said in the previous video, we can find the code at the eLab website under the Torch 7 demo repository and in the folder rnn-train-sample. Let's start by having a look at how this program runs. So let's call th main. We have the training progress and here we have the output notation. We can observe in green the true positives, in uh, white simply the true negative, in white with red background the false positives, which means the network tells that the sequence is positive but it is not and then underline it's the false negative basically it's when the network doesn't recognize the sequence so in green again it's when the network recognizes the sequence in white is when the network do not identify wrongly any sequence red background is when a sequence has been identified as positive but is not and the underline it's when a sequence has not been recognized as we can see here from this the sequence b a a p b b and then we have twice abba that is has been recognized so it is in green then there is one more abba which has not been recognized therefore is underlined then we have a b and then three b's followed by a a which the network thinks it's ABBA, it's not, and therefore it is highlighted in red background. Then it correctly identify true negatives, so we have all a white sequence, then correctly identify the ABBA sequence, and we go on like this up to the end of the sequence. Let's see how this training is implemented. This is the main .lua file. We require an end graph and optim, so we can use them both in this script. We set a torch manual seed of 6 in order to have repeatability of this script. If you run this script, you will observe the same result that I'm showing you right now. Then we set the torch default tensor type to float tensor. This is a common practice in machine learning. We do not require very high precision during computation. Moreover, there are a set of hyperparameters. N is the dimensionality of the input, that is 2. D is the dimensionality of the hidden representation. Then we have number of hidden layers. We have just one hidden layer. And then K is the output dimensionality. That is again two. 
n is 2 because it can be a or b so the notation since it's one hot encoding will be 1 0 or 0 1 and the same way we will have for k a dimensionality of 2 because we will have a probability distribution across the classes t is the maximum length of the sequence which is equal 4 since abba has four characters the training size is set to 10,000 and the testing size is set to 250. Let's see what happens if we change the hidden dimensionality going from 2 to 3. We run again the script. And we have all correct predictions. So we have seen now that one singular hidden layer with three neurons it's able to solve this simple problem. Let's go back to the previous screen. We set a learning rate of 0 0.02 and a smoothing factor of 0 0.95, which are then sent to the optimum state. We define some coloring shortcuts that are showing you the different colors of the background and the underlying features. Then we do data equal require data and then we call data.getData with the training size and the maximum length of the sequence and we expect to receive x and y. So let's have a look to data. And here we have data. So the function getData defines a torch tensor of dimensionality size of the training which is filled with ones and twos randomly. We define a y which is a tensor of ones and then if we do find from the fourth position to the last element of the training size the sequence a b b a or one two two one then we set the corresponding label of y to two then we define our x x is gonna have as many rows as the training size and as many columns as the features. Since it's a one hot encoding with two symbols, we will have just two columns. So for the first to the last feature, if the symbol is a A, then we are gonna set A1. So basically it's gonna be a one zero. Otherwise, if the feature is a B, so it's a two, we are gonna set zero one basically. And then we return X and Y. And then we have RNN equal require RNN. And then we have that we call the get model from the RNN package. We have wrote with the dimensionality of the input, the dimensionality of the hidden layer, the number of hidden layers, the dimensionality of the output K, and the max length of the sequence T. And then the output is going to be a model, which is the prototype clone over the capital T time steps and the prototype, which is one of these cloned models. Then we define a criterion, which is a negative log lag liquid class criterion. So it's our classical cross entropy. If you don't know what is a cross entropy criterion, just check CNN loss video lecture. Then we get our one dimensional vectors containing the weights of the model and the grad parameters, which are the derivatives of the loss function with respect to the parameters. And then we print on screen the number of elements that are in W, so the number of parameters. We then define H0 and H tables and we fill them with tensors of zeros. So these are the initial state and the current state of the network. But since we haven't started using the network, we are going to fill them with the zeros. Then we forward our first four samples in the network that is clone over time and in the prototype so that we can plot the two graphs with full annotations. Let's have a look at these two graphs. This is the prototype. We can see that after the first reverse maps and splits, we have the X of T in orange on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, we have in red the first and actually only hidden layer at the time step T minus one. These two inputs are fed inside a join table, which is then sent to a linear, which is then sent into a nonlinearity, which computes the first hidden layer output at time t. If we would have had more layers, then they would have stacked one after each other. The output of the first and only hidden layer, then it's sent to another linear, and then to the final log softmax, which allows us to use the cross entropy criterion. Here we have the full model clone over time. In blue, we are going to see the RNN prototypes. So we have RNN1, RNN time step 2, 
RNN time step 3 and RNN time step 4. To the first RNN time step 1, we are going to feed the previous value of the hidden state. And then we send also the first element of our sequence X of 1. Then the output of the RNN, the red circle which contains the hidden layer at the time step 1, it's fed together with the second element of our X tensor into the second clone RNN2. The output of RNN2, which is the H at time 2, it's fed into the RNN3 together with the X at time 3. Finally, the last H of time 3 together with the X at time 4, it's fed into the RNN4, which produces the last output H. Moreover, each of these RNN blue blocks produce the Y prime softmax output. So we are gonna have here y hat 1, y hat 2, y hat 3, and y hat 4, which we are going to be using in order to, to train and to write the prediction at the testing time. Here we define two helper functions. One allows me to go from tables to tensors, and the other one allows me to go from tensor to table. It also adds some zeros that are going to be sent into the state when we perform backpropagation. We will see this in a few lines of code. Here we initialize our training error to zero. Then we go from the first element to the last element of our training set with a time step of capital T. We are going to narrow the whole dataset X along the first dimensionality. We start from the item iteration and we take just capital T elements. We do the same for the Y tensor. We define then our F evaluation. We set our model to training mode. Then we have our current state, which is going to be the collection of the output Y's followed by the H's states. It's going to be equal our model to which we forward our X sequence. And we unpack the tables of H. In this case, we just have one hidden layer. So we just send there one tensor. But in the case, you would have chosen multiple hidden layers. The unpack would have sent separately each and every tensor. Then we have the prediction. We convert the states table, which contains the Y prediction and the H hidden states, into just prediction. So we basically extract just the prediction from the states. Then we compute the error via the criterion to which we forward the prediction and the Y sequence. Perform the backward pass. We compute the gradient of the error with respect to the output of the system by forwarding again the prediction and the labels to the criterion using the backward method. Then we convert the output tensor from the criterion into a table, which we are going to use in order to perform backpropagation through the model. But before sending it into the model, we have to zero the grad parameters in order to perform stochastic gradient descent. Otherwise, people would have been accumulating the grad parameters over the previous values. Finally, we take care of storing all the hidden layers state into the H table. In this way, when we go back above and we unpack H, we are going to unpack the current state of the network and we do not have a zero state every time we switch to the next sequence. And that's it. We simply call optim with the RMS prop optimization function to which we provide the function evaluation, the parameters W, and the optim state, which was containing the learning rate and the learning rate decay. Now we go to testing. We start our testing by setting the model and the prototype to evaluation. So we turn off any kind of training related features. We again initialize our hidden state to the H0 state, which is a table of tensors set to zero. Moreover, we require a new data set of size, uh, yes. size, which was 150. So in order to be able to test our system on data that is not the training data. Then we define some pointers for the queue we are going to use later in order to visualize nicely the result. And here we have the test function. Gets the first element of the X validation set and it sends to the prototype, which is one of the RNN replicas. It sends the first symbol of the sequence together with the state of the network, 
which we start from a zero state. And then we obtain the output, which contains the next state, and we cache it. And then we extract the prediction by checking the value after the states. Then we check whether the first symbol was a 1, 0 or 0, 1. We convert it to the character A or B. Then, if we are just processing the first three elements of the whole validation set, we insert them into our sequential buffer and we do not do anything. Otherwise, if we are at the fourth symbol, we can start evaluating whether the sequence is a correct sequence or it's a bad sequence. Index is the max index of the prediction, so prediction is going to be a log likelihood, and we take the max. So if the index is equal to the label, then we are going to draw it in green. Otherwise, if we got it wrong, there are two cases. One case is that the label is two, so it's basically we have a sequence, but we haven't identified the sequence, so we have a false negative. Or otherwise, if it's not a two, we have identified a sequence, then we have a false positive. And then we update the pointers. We get the next value from the queue and we write it on the screen. At the end, we simply print the legend or the visualization and we iterate the test function over the test size dimension. And let's run it once more. And since we have restored the dimensionality of the hidden state to two, we are gonna see again uh, different mistakes. So we train here, number of parameters are 16, it's a very small network. And then we can see again, we have a true negative, true positive. Then we have a false negative, we didn't see the ABBA coming. Then we have again a true negative, and then we got a false positive. The output of the network was saying that it was a positive, but it was not there. And that's it. Thank you for listening.